Okay, today we've got a BMC, customers just coming, complaining of very premature bottom bracket wear, especially on the non-drive side. And taking this bottom bracket out, we can feel that this is now a horrible, notchy experience. Now, first thing we do is a quick visual inspection and quite literally look, see if we've got any void, scratches, anything really obvious. And then next, a very tactile inspection. So literally running your finger around here, what looks to be smooth, you can almost feel edges in it. It's almost like a hexagon, that's an exaggeration. But if you feel it, you'll get the idea that you can feel something changing. After that, our suspicions are raised, so let's try and do some measurements. The first thing we'd like to try and grab is the bore gauge. This is a bore micrometer. You can pick these up fairly cheap these days. Um, and this is quite good at getting an average bore. So this is our first check, if you like. Um, and we just need to put this in. I like to line up the edges of this and then just click to make sure it's in place. But the thing with this is as we move it around the circle, our dimensions change ever so slightly. And that's our first clue is to go into the next stage. So right now, this looks like it's measuring about 40.95, which looks okay, but it gets smaller and bigger as we move it around the circle. So now I'm fairly sure that this is overlies, but to what extent is the next part? So this is an internal micrometer, and I'm just using a pen here so I can mark it and work it out for myself. But again, we're just lining up those edges, and making sure you're well and truly lined up. And you start taking those measurements and you go around the compass points and I like to mark the points on here. So then I get an idea of where is tight. So across here, we're measuring 0 0.82, 0 0.85, 0 0.88, and then around here, we get into our bigger sizes, 95, 98, which explains why the boy micrometer was averaging out at a normal size. Now, we do this on both sides, and we have a bit of a problem. So the final sanity check for us then, and probably the check that you're more likely to do in your workshop, is taking your 40.95 gauge. This is just some blue dike on here, so I can help visualize the high spots and I'm putting a little mark on there so I always get it in a consistent place. And you can see that's definitely not going in very far at all. This is just a feeler gauge. This is a 0 0.09. And you can see the gap. I mean, I can see daylight here, but just to help you guys out, that feeler gap gauge easily fits in the gap just there and around here. See. Now, although the non-drive side was the, clearly the problem based on our bottom bracket, um, we can do the same to the drive side and it's not as bad, but the ovalization is sadly opposite to this. So our tight spot is in this dimension here. On the drive side, it's actually in this dimension. So I'm a bit of a problem. All these components are still relatively new, but we can still see a slight sign of under rotation between these two marks that I've made. Where something has been dragging on this part of the shaft. So all the clues are adding up to a bit of a problem to solve. Okay, solution then. Now, after a bit of thought, I think the best way of approaching this is to first make sure we correct the biggest problem, which is that non-drive side being way too tight and slightly overlies. And we're gonna fix that with the tool that we've been waiting so long for. This is a 40.98 reamer. We know that we're not that far. We are literally shaving microns off and we can go with this very, very carefully and make sure that non-drive side is absolutely perfect. Then we go back, revisit the drive side and see what misalignment exists and see if we can correct that just through a little bit of light sanding. Mm. Okay, let's get started. important thing with this is to make sure that everything is super square and we only want a little bit of very light tension and get some lubrication. Just some soapy water just to keep everything nice and wet. Remember we're not cutting metal, this is an abrasive thing so I'm just trying to keep the dust and stuff down really and go at this very, very carefully. You can see with the spring acting on the other side that this is helpfully just pulling it forwards. Now what can happen is the tension gets higher and higher. 
So as I feel it biting, I'm gonna take some tension off to make sure it goes through nice and easy. We don't want to cut too deep too soon. Just see it's gradually just easing its way deeper into the hole, keeping it very, very light pressure. Remember, we're just shaving off microns of material. You should not really feel any resistance, like I'm literally just pushing this with very light pressure. Take your time. What I'm really trying to avoid is any sort of situation where it's going to bind. of the cutter. Nice. And that should spin fairly easily at the end of that. Nice. Okay. There we go. You can literally see the tiny amount of material we've removed and keeping it wet means all that carbon dust is kept nicely under control. Remember this is a steel tool so make sure you clean this and dry it and oil it. Really look after your tools. Just cleaning this up with a bit of blue roll and you can instantly literally feel that that is a beautifully smooth surface. Cool, so these are the dimensions from before and you can see where the tight spot is in this part of the frame here. But now I wanna see we've corrected the drive, the non-drive side as to that extent. And actually that is still a tight spot. You can see this parallel moving around. Okay, through this axis we get into this area here, it gets tighter and tighter. That tight spot actually probably starts about here to about here now. So all I'm gonna do is, right, drive side in, and I've already marked this out. This isn't as horrendously undersized, nor as horrendously overlized either. So I've got my parallels here, which I've set from the non-drive side, which I know is accurate now, but we just cut those and feeding these through and use this to rotate and find where the tight spot is. And it's about here through to here. I've got a little bit of material to remove just to help bring these into alignment, but we're gonna do that by hand. So this is now a case of using, what's this, 400 grit, using it wet and just concentrating on this area and this area and trying to keep this access about the same. This way it can be a bit more focused in our work. And remember, we always sand, measure, sand, measure. This takes some time. So why, why would you not use the Rima on this side? And because of alignment issues, really, what we're trying to do is bring this back into alignment. So we know that this is going to be the tight area. So we're trying to bring this back in line. If I just go with the reamer, I'm gonna end up with two perfectly round but slightly misaligned holes. This way I'm gonna end up with a bit of a gap, but I can fill the gap with um, retaining compounds. So this is hopefully gonna correct the alignment issue a bit more. I am rolling. Cool, so after a fair bit of work, again, just using those parallels, working my way around, finding the high spikes, always checking. We've got to the point where this now is a, a push into the frame. Now, 
might be a little bit undersized on this side still compared to the non-drive side, but I'm more happy with the alignment situation. <laughs> Let's get cleaned up and get a bottom bracket back into this. This is a metal bearing going into a carbon shell. According to SRAM's instructions, we need a grease interface in here. So this is our new little syringe. Things is gonna be in the shop pretty soon. Love these because it's so nice to get a clean application of grease. These just sit on the work surface. It keeps the brush well away from any dirt. Let's get these lined up. Oh, that feels so much better. And if this alignment is good, this should be... Yes! That's when you know we have the alignment right. We don't have to fight to try and get the axle through. If it all slides through like that, that's when you know the alignment is good. Monstrous 54 Newton meters. There's 50, 2, 3, 4. Let's just bring the preload up just so it's touching. We've got no movement side to side. Gotta be super careful with these bolts because they are so easy to snap and literally just enough to stop that ring slipping. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, I hope you found that video useful. I'm certainly glad I've got a BMC working smoothly as it should do. It's such a beautiful bike this. Now, if you like this video, please think about subscribing. Until the next one, take it easy.